Hi everyone, Jeremy Simon here with 3D Universe. I thought we'd do a fun little uh, experiment today. I was getting ready to assemble a prosthetic here. It's called the Cyborg Beast. And uh, this is actually going to be my first time through a full assembly. Uh, I have no background in this. I'm just a guy with a 3D print. But the instructions are good. The models are obviously very good. And so I'm going to show here just how doable this is by anyone out there who would like to do it. So uh, I'm going to let this thing run in a time lapse, and uh, I might do this in, in different pieces because it's going to take a while, so you might see some, some scene cuts, but I'm not going to delete anything out. You're going to see the whole thing with all my fumbles and, and everything so, uh, so that you can see exactly what this, is, what this is like. So here we go. What we've got here is obviously the 3D printed parts themselves. And this is the gauntlet. This is what goes over the arm. Hold it in, in place there and uh, allows for the wrist movement. This is the hand portion that will fit over the individual's uh, hand and connects, of course, to the gauntlet. And it is it's through that wrist motion that the mechanism will be activated and fingers will, will move. We have five of these uh, hex tensioners. These are going to go inside of these slots here in the gauntlet. Uh, so that's going to allow us to, uh, to create the tension that we want on the cords that are acting as tendons in this design. We'll see that in a little while. We have the fingers themselves over here, five of them. We have four fingers, and one you'll notice is a little bit smaller. That's the thumb. And then we have the lower joints associated with those that connect them to the hand. We also have uh, the hardware necessary to assemble all of that. Most of these are Chicago screws of various sizes, and those are all specified in the instructions, so I won't go over all of that here. But you've got one size that's going to be for holding the Velcro onto the uh, assembly. You've got one size that's going to be for attaching the hinges uh, and the size for the fingers, etc. The long one here is to go through the knuckle block there, sort of hold it all together. And again, that's detailed out in the instructions. Uh, I'm using some standard wood screws there that you'll see will go into these, these hex tensioners. And uh, it's just whatever happens to fit based on how you're scaling this uh, for who you're sizing it for. Other materials that we have here are uh, some Velcro cut into various sizes according to the directions. This is just two inch wide, two inch wide Velcro, which is soft on one side and not on the other. Obviously, we'll be putting this off side down. And so I've cut those pieces to the appropriate sizes for what we'll be doing. Also have a standard hole punch here, which is going to punch holes in the Velcro through which we can place those Chicago screws to attach it. We then have uh, dip and grip, which is a sort of a rubber, uh, liquid rubber dip that uh, I would be using to dip the fingertips in and give them better uh, traction gripping objects. We have uh, a heavy duty needle and thread, which uh, a thick thread, which I'll be using to sew the uh, Velcro together uh, uh, as we attach it to the gauntlet here, which you'll see in, in the time lapse. Over here we have uh, medical foam padding. And this is also, all, all of these materials are spelled out in the instructions. They give you links where to download these things, make it really easy. So this is foam padding with adhesive on one side that will be used to line the inside of the gauntlet and the hand to make it nice and comfortable for the user. And so that will be cut to fit. We have a Glen sleeve, which is simply to help avoid any kind of uh, abrasion or irritation. Uh, I, I, I don't actually know whether or not that's necessary, which is the uh, Velcro feels so soft, but uh, that's not an area I have experience in yet. We then have two different kinds of cord. Uh, we have the standard uh, lift cord, which is, uh, I guess, what's used for drapes, pulling those up. Very strong, but thin. That's the cord that's going to be used for the tendon lines to actually help uh, pull the fingers in. And I've already cut some lengths of that. And we have flexible bead cord. And this flexible cord is going to be used for the return motion to bring the fingers back to their original position. So. We have that, and then a few basic tools. We've got some cutters that'll be used to cut the cord, uh, razor uh, slash X-Acto knife to cut the 
Velcro as I already have and trim off any little bits that are needed from the plastic pieces and then a flathead and a Phillips screwdriver for the two different types of screws that we'll be using. That should be about everything that we need unless I've missed anything so uh, let the fun begin and let the time lapse roll. All right, so the first thing I did was attach the uh, knuckles, I guess, the, the lower joints with that long Chicago screw and then the fingers using the other Chicago screws and the thumb. Now I am measuring and cutting the foam. As you can see, I put the one piece in the hand there and the rest, the larger piece, is for the gauntlet. So that's going in and just trimming it a little bit there to get it to fit a little better. So now I am working on the flexible cord pieces. These are the tendon lines for returning the fingers to their original positions. You'll notice I'm using the lighter there on the ends. That helps to sort of melt the end a little bit so that it fits more easily through those channels because it gets a little frayed otherwise. And so I'm going through and feeding them in through the fingertips, uh, tying them off. And that knot then slips inside the fingertip nicely so that it's out of sight. And then they feed through the hand and, and tie off in the back. And I'm also checking the tension level in the fingers so that they can still bend easily, but they have enough tension in that cord to return to their original positions. Uh, there I'm attaching that gauntlet with a couple of screws and putting in now uh, the cords through the lower channels of the fingers which are used to pull them in to contract them and those are feeding in now to the little tensioners which you can see me screwing in and I'm just tying them loosely to begin with so I can check the tension level and, and get them where I want them before I, I tie them off fully and uh, you can use those screws to fine-tune that tensioning. Uh, it's really a nice tensioning system that gives you a, a lot of flexibility. And as you can see there, I'm trying to get it so that all the fingers are moving uh, at the same, the same point, the same amount, and uh, that's what those adjustable screws are for. I had to replace one of the cords since one of the knots kind of slipped through, so I ended up using a triple knot to make sure it didn't come through. Really nice design on those tensioners. So it's working well. Now moving on to the Velcro. First piece goes into the palm there, so I'm measuring where the holes need to be punched and uh, punching those out and then using Chicago screws to attach that piece. And there's another piece that's used to cover up those uh, the parts where the Chicago screws come through. And now in the back I am sewing those pieces on so that there aren't any uh, pieces of metal on there to uh, uh, affect the person's arm. And so one piece at a time going through and sewing across the best I can. Uh, certainly not my strong suit, but it uh, is certainly doable, just takes time. So here's the, uh, uh, the one, one side done, just kind of testing it out for the fit and then trimming off those, those pieces of Velcro to make them a little shorter. Now moving on to the other side, the other slot. So two more pieces of Velcro, same thing, sewing them on across uh, the bottom. And once these last couple of pieces of Velcro are finished, it's really just about done. Uh, the only thing left is dipping the fingers in that liquid rubber, which I'm going to save for another time. Okay, so here we have it. This is the uh, fully assembled Cyborg Beast prosthetic. And as you can see, it uh, wasn't too difficult. You know, the instructions are excellent. Just takes some, some time and patience. I think the uh, the sewing of the, the Velcro is probably the most challenging part, at least for me. Uh, but otherwise, uh, it, it really came out nicely. So uh, I, uh, I sized this one in particular for my 10-year-old uh, son, Zachary, as a test. Uh, Zachary is blessed with two healthy hands, but I had to test one on someone. So, uh, Zachary, if you want to come on over here, give me a hand. Let's see if we can uh, size this and uh, see if it fits. So we're going to open these up. And basically lay your hand in there yeah now this is this is not going to fit quite right because he has fingers <laughs> and so these are taking up space here that normally wouldn't wouldn't be there I'm just going to sort of wrap these around his fist in this case but normally the, the palm itself would be thinner than this so 
it would it would fit a lot more nicely. Go ahead and strap you in here, nice and snug. And now, let's see if that works. You should be able to bend your wrist. Cool. Look at that. Turn it over so people can see the other side. You can you can hold yeah hold your arm down here and, and bend your wrist up. Look at that. So bending bending the wrist causes these these tendon lines to ten, tense up and that causes the fingers to come in. I can already see I need to make a couple of minor adjustments. I'll have to add a little bit more tension to these fingers over here, and that's what these tensioners are for. You just have to adjust these screws, and that will pull them in a little bit tighter. And uh, looked like it uh, it came out really nicely for our first attempt. The uh, plastic parts are all pretty much straight off the printer. This is ABS plastic, uh, orange being Zachary's favorite color. And uh, this is pretty much exactly how it came off. It did a little bit of sanding inside the joints just to help the fingers move easily. But other than that, uh, this is exactly how it uh, how it came off without really any work needed past past the print itself. So pretty cool, I think. Uh, yeah. I think that's what we wanted to show. So, as I said earlier, the whole point here being, if I can manage to put one of these together without too much trouble, anyone can, really. So, this is uh, very exciting. Hope you enjoy. Thanks. Mm -hmm.